Hey Tower fans, welcome to another edition of Blue Six Tower. I'm your fantastic host, Blue Six. Thank you very much for watching. Now, in today's video, I'll be doing an unboxing of this lovely deck of tarot, the Celtic Tarot. Um, although there is another Celtic Tarot that exists, but this one's the one by, done by La Scarabino. And if you do enjoy the video, you can like, share, subscribe, and you can also follow me on the social medias as well. So without further ado, roll on the intro. Okay, so starting off with the general look of the uh, general look of the box, nice and green. So uh, I thought it'd be something nice near Christmas time. So I'd probably say it's either the priestess, not the priestess, either like the empress or the uh, maybe an ace. I'm quite sure there. It's on the side here. I'd say that's probably the emperor there. Uh, either the lovers or the two of cups. Probably more the lovers. Um, that might either be the will or the um, empress there, but we'll find out. <clears throat> so those of you who might um, have a lot of Lascarabino yourselves, it's the same standard dimensions. So you've got five inches high followed by three across. So I'm not going to do the laborious. Um, um, so I'm not going to. What get you to watch me unwrap this, so just have a quick skip ahead. Okay, so starting out <clears throat> with an advert for a deck I have not seen, um, unless this is actually part of the deck. If so, I'm going to have to put this not suitable for children. But there we go. So I'll just move that out of the way. Um, oh, I think this might be part of the deck then. So that's a really cool kind of design there. Um, in fact, I might actually use these for next week. Um, but for the time being. This is kind of how they look. So put that one aside. So you just have the, once again, the standard advert card. So we'll have a quick look at the little book here. So that's either the M, that's either the magician or the hermit. Probably say more the magician by the looks of it. Now I don't really know a lot about Celtic um, folklore or anything like that. But um, <clears throat> so this is just more of how this looks to someone who's not really into the Celtic stuff. So. Alright, so now those of you who might not know the Scarabino, they have all the different languages at the bottom. So that's what the cards cover. I've got to go upside down there. Oops. But yeah, that's what all the cards, they're the languages that are on each card and in the little booklet. And also the little booklet tends to have a tarot card spread. So I'll just take a quick look at that once my fingers start working properly. So that's the sort of spread this one's recommending. And so. It's doing this, uh, so it's from the divination. Ah, here we go. So, let's see what the little book says that the spread is called. Um, it is called, the div it's referred to as the divinity spread. So that's interesting. Um, so it's 13, um, so it's got 13 pieces to that. And then the rest of the book is your standard fare of the Scarabino, just the descriptions of each card. So we're not going to sit through the book. We're now going to take a look through the deck. As I said, the back does look really cool. So let's see what this gives us. Right, um, so this one's starting off with the miners, which is always interesting when they do that. So I'm going to go zoom in just a bit. There we go. Hopefully that should be not too blurry. Right, so starting off with the Ace of Chalices. So this is going for Chalices, not Cups, in the English version. So you've got your different language there and at the bottom. So the artwork on that one looks really nice. Nice. Oh, whoops. Ah, so you've got the two of cups. Um, they don't look necessarily connected, like in a romantic way. It might be more like the joining of two families and households rather than anything to do with romance. So three is a nice little look of the the three ladies getting together. Um, let me just take a look. Uh, yeah, they've all got different colour hair as well. I think that's very important. I'm a fan of redheads myself. Um, oh, that's quite a nice one. Uh, the Four of Cups having a nice kind of desolate look to them. So they're not just um, sitting in a green field. There's 
there's desolation, there's dry grass, there's a, a dying tree. So that looks more like you're in a situation you don't really want to be in, and but someone's coming and giving you a hand. So I think I'll definitely use these for next week. Definitely. Um, five of Cups. Okay, that's quite an interesting one. In fact, it's like a knight, or a, well, a warrior of a description, I believe knight, but um, once again, I don't know a lot about um, the Celtic folklore. So I just had a cup of water there, very unprofessional, but I'm also very thirsty. <clears throat> so I've got the Six of Cups there, um, with the nice bowl beetles haircut there. Not quite sure it's with that person's lips. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, um, the, purport, the proportions of the people were a bit off, because the hands look a little bit too big. But then I'm just nitpicking at this point. So we have uh, the Seven. I like how all the different... Um, Cups, chalices, whatever you want to call them, madame. I like the style of artwork around there. And also the fact the hand holding a dagger. So these aren't all what appears normally in this deck as well, um, in this card. So it's usually different items. That's quite interesting. Um, I like the look of this one. Um, he's looking not lethar lethargic, but just kind of... He's had enough of this BS and he's just going. There's more of, um, there's more of a passion behind him leaving, it's like, I've just had enough, I just want to go, so I like that one. Um, the six, look, uh, the nine looks quite good, now in my group, the the nine, um, for the Les Scarab Les Scarabino, for the Rider Waite Smith um, nine of chalices, um, we usually refer to him as the smug gift card, but um, you know what, he doesn't look smug, he looks comfortable and he looks like he's earned that. But he doesn't look like he's like being big headed about it. So that's a nice kind of ten of cups. Nothing nothing too nothing too tradition breaking, but family, they look quite chilled. I like that one. Um so we're going with knave, but then I think the Scarabino tend to stick with knave rather than page. So you've got the knave here, knave of chalices. Um, I kind of like his vague confusion and wonder of the fish coming out. That does look quite nice there. Um, the Knight of Chalices. He doesn't look necessarily romantic, but he does look more weather worn. So he does look like he's seen combat, unlike once again the riders, where he looks like he's got a nice shiny set of armour, but doesn't actually look like he's actually been in a fight. This guy looks like he's been in a fight, has been in combat. We've got the Queen of Chalices. Um, she does look like some. She does look like someone who's kind of with her emotions, but at the same time, she does kind of look a bit sleepy. Um, so she just might be very chill. Um, then you've got the uh, King of Chalices, who was on the side of the box. Um, and once again, similar to the Knight, he doesn't necessarily seem like classic style so he doesn't look like a man you can actually approach but then being a king you don't necessarily you know you you still have to wear all the regalia regardless of the sort of person you are so I don't necessarily get like a comforting vibe from him he does look more like a king of swords or um, pentacles than anything else but we'll continue so you, next one you've got the pentacles let's get a nice ace there oh I like the look of this guy I think I'm seeing a theme going on now, so let's keep going. So this one looks like a nymph might be, once again it's Celtic lore, so I'm only aware of a few things, so they kind of like have elves who are also like shapeshifters, so what they tend to do is um, they will take your chart, they, 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 it's kind of dark, but they take your baby and replace it with one of their babies, and the baby will take on your form. And so basically you wind up raising uh, an elf, essentially. Um, okay, so you've got a nice... So it looks like these are kind of like elves sort of thing, really. Um, if anyone... You know, you can correct me in the comments if I've got the names of these wrong. But yeah, so you've got like an, uh, kind of like an elf there and a, a higher elf, I guess. Or a dwarf, I'm not sure. And again, I'm not fully up with my folklore but I do recommend the podcast lore by Aaron Mankey that's quite handy with uh, different folklores of different things it's also on Amazon Prime but I recommend the podcast if you like podcasts and folklore 
yeah, so you've got this guy again with the uh, four, a very kind of grasping there. And also like a lot of the fact there's there's just nothing but soil and earth around him, so that makes sense there. Ah, so uh, I think Fay is the Irish term, I'm not quite sure. Once again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, please. Yeah, so you've got the uh, five of uh, coins here, pentacles rather. And it does seem like the um, supernatural people um, characters are actually are the ones being shunned. So these none of these are human. These all feel like they are um, fe fey folk and stuff. So you've got uh, another elf here giving um, for the six giving out being the one giving out money. So this kind of feels more to the to the fey. Uh, the seven there. Um, I'm not sure if he's growing it or just hanging it. It looks like he's hanging it, but the standard is the fact he's growing. But that still looks quite nice. It, it still has that kind of same message and feel that they're here to just um, get uh, get it when it's needed. <coughs> then you've got the nice apprentice card there, the eight. And once again, it's similar principle with the trees, but I also like the fact that these do look different. So that might be like the guy's earliest and then second and then he's just kind of getting better and better um, so I do like the fact they don't look even so then you've got the uh, gold coins here so you've got this lovely lady there on a platform of some description a kind of like mystical bird there it's quite, in quite an interesting look so now you've got the ten and it's a nice little camp actually instead of like a little town centre so you've got the elderly one here um, that doesn't look like a standard dog and uh, so you've got the couple at the background there and the kid with another dog okay so you've got the uh, uh, the the knave here <coughs> um, kind of summoning the coin and kind of bringing it into the ether which is quite interesting there now this feels more like um, this feels more like the classic um, uh, Knight of Pentacles compared to the Knight of um, Cups we had earlier. Um, but yeah, this one does have the kind of patience with him because this doesn't look like it's a, a. Is that a weapon? Might be a weapon. Um, it doesn't look like he's. It doesn't look like that's the thing for combat. Weapons aren't really known for their combat prowess. So we've got the Queen here sitting on a tree, kind of mother and nurture. So that. That looks quite right there. And then you've got the uh, King of Pentacles, and he does look not quite like a merchant, but he does have that he, he does have that standard look to him. You see, because it's kind of I don't know. <clears throat> he he does look like someone you can approach and speak with, but he doesn't have that kind of inapproachable sort of look to him compared to some of the others. Right, so this one's going to be interesting. Now we see that they're changing species. So we've got the wands. Uh, so far, that looks like a human. Um, and there's also a nice, interesting kind of storm clouds there as well. So this guy looks human so far. So you've got nice little kind of Celtic patterns there. Uh, once again, the classic sort of look with the man overlooking the shoreline. Same again here. I'd probably say this probably looks more like a barbar bar blah, try that again, like a barbarian. Um, um rather than like a live in a society, they're kinda of like a, this I guess in the in this sort of environment he'd be more like um not towns fake, but just kind of li live in like little encampments and stuff, so or, or, well, or just the or just the standard working class <clears throat> as the um ones do tend to kind of point towards. So now we've got the uh, four of ones here. And not quite the same because they don't seem to be celebrating as they tend to, as they tend to be looking in the riders, but they do are that they are kind of putting things together. They look like they're kind of saving it for winter. They got the five of wands. That is a very kind of uh, confrontational sort of look here. So sometimes with the riders, you can either depict it as. Uh, people working together or people practicing this does look like a lot of conflict um, so then we've got the six which at first glance did look like another kind of 
conflict scenario but that does look more like a parade like a returning party they've come back from their hunt and they've come and they've captured great beasts and food to feast upon oh, that was rude uh, no, little car car in the background there <clears throat> so I've got the seven of wands once again kind of like a classic style of wands I do like how they kind of nulled at the bottom so they look like they've actually been pulled out from the root rather than just um, a gnarled end, so that's quite an interesting one. <clears throat> uh, so you've got the Eight of Wands, kind of nice little uh, gateway here, um, near some pi uh, kind of pillars there, so that looks quite cool. Um, the angle of those I think is quite nice, because they usually just kind of just go straight across, but they look like they're coming from a particular direction. From on high, which is also quite good, because you can kind of see it as um, Something coming from the heavens or the spirit world or what have you, and they're coming from so they're coming from above rather than just anywhere. So we've got the nine, kind of like a little bit burden there. But as I said, I do quite like how these bits look. They do look really nice. Uh, Ten, kind of how I'd imagine it. I like the little extra of there being a hill and there's a castle so there is a goal at the end of this so there is a little kind of smidgen of hope depending on how you depict if that's worth going to or not all right so now we go with the um the knave i think this is probably more orc i think that the, the only thing i can compare these to is kind of like i'm um, kind of like orcs and lord of the rings uh, or like the skinny ones because that's also not quite not quite a human but uh for the, yeah for the uh, knave of wands he looks um, for kind of not quite the sort of look you'd have from the knave, but you know, each different designs are always quite interesting. You know, I'd rather always have different designs there. So um, I kind of like the look of this creature here, and as well as in the snow as well, which I think is quite interesting because as the um, each um, each suit have their own element, so this is actually the element of fire, but the closest they seem to be doing is smoke, which I think is quite good. But then it kind of being like Celtic, um, where there's a lot of greenery and stuff. I'd imagine a fire wouldn't necessarily be something you'd want in the area. But um, he does look quite intimidating, but not necessarily having the same message as the classic. I mean, you don't really need to. Um, okay, I don't think this is suitable for children, so I'm going to have to put that in at some point. Um, in fact, speaking of which, that does look very phallic. So uh, there's that. So um, the Queen of uh, Queen of Wands, um, is, you know, traditionally considered like someone for kind of very approach, a very approachable and kind of at the same time very um, ma not matter of fact. They're someone you can t they're, they're the sort of person you can kind of talk to, but at the same time they kind of give you the information. They won't beat around the, they won't beat around the bush like I'm doing, but at the same time they won't be too harsh about it either. So yeah, I I say she looks very approachable. And except with that massive, massive rock on the end of that stick. Um, then you've got the King of Wands, who looks like a villain from like half the cartoons from the 80s and 90s, uh, from like Ulysses or something. But yeah, he he does not look. He doesn't look in the same way as the other King of Wands, as uh, some of the other previous Kings of Wands. So, not a fan of him. I mean, he looks cool, but he doesn't quite have the traditional look of the king. Okay, so now we go for the swords. I do like the little deck. And I like the kind of stone crown there. So uh, so we've got the uh, two of swords there. Um, she doesn't actually look like she's on anything. So she's just kind of standing there. Uh, I do like the crescent moon there. And uh, once again, fan of redheads. Um, and this one seems to have more of a fire look to it, really, which I think is a bit strange. Um, so maybe considering like with um with the theme of the deck maybe the sword is considered fire whilst the um wands are considered air which is interesting there yeah, so i've got three of well, three of swords there it's kind of i like how they've done the hearts with there so it's also not a physical heart but it's kind of how they're feeling on the inside a uh, nice classic uh classic four of swords here uh, once again, a lot of red in this, so I think that's pretty much going to be the theme here. And they look humans, and I think these are humans. Um, so this is kind of in the catacombs of sorts. I think that looks quite good there. Um, 
nice classic image here of the uh, five of the five of swords. There's people walking off into the sunset, but you can't really see their details because once again, previously you can usually see the looks on their faces, and they usually look depressed, and he looks kind of smug about it. But this guy looks like it's well, it's over now. See you later. Very matter of fact. So then you've got the uh, six here, and I like the little mark, uh, the little figurehead here. Oh, and they're kind of uh, thing at the back of the boat. I don't know boats. I can't remember which one's bow and stern. Um, hmm. This one's also interesting um, with the seven because there's not really much going on in the background. But then that's more of you don't necessarily need to have something in the background to get the message on what's happening in the foreground. So I, I like the, the detail in this bloke here, and I like the, some some of these cards. I like the idea you don't really have much detail in the background. Uh, so the Eight of Swords, she looks more like a prisoner of someone else as she's on this pillar. Now, once again, they're usually not really tethered to anything, so this does have more of a sense of um, being trapped by someone else rather than yourself. So you've got the uh, Nine of Swords. I should probably look at that because my head's onto the side here. Um, doesn't look like the most com uh, Red Sonia does not look like she's sleeping comfortably. A uh, little comic book joke for you, some of you there. Um, and also the fact that they're being suspended as well. So that is kind of... Um, <laughs> not, not like, sort, like nine sword of Damocles. That does not look like a good scenario. Um, and now for a ten. A, a relatively graphic one, considering. Um, so... There's a, yeah, so there's a lot of interesting... There's a lot of... I don't want to say basic... Because obviously a lot of hard work went into making this, but the background they're kind of going okay. There's a background, but here's the bit you actually need to look at, and I do quite like that. I do quite like not having to worry too much about the background here, and also like the kind of roots going along here. But yeah, he does not look like he's had a good day. Ah, that's a nice looking knave. That's a nice looking knave there. So the knave of swords looks pretty good. Um, I'm really curious to see what the uh, knights can look like. Yep, I like that knight. He looks pretty dope. He looks well sick, yo. That's kind of how I... This one's one of the few ones that actually looks accurate to how I would have imagined them. So you've got the Queen of Swords. Um, once again, she does have that... She has a classic Queen look, or Queen of Swords with her. And a very severe sort of look with her. Once again, loving all the red. And as I said, it does feel like it's more about fire than air. But uh, that's how that goes. And the King of Swords, who pretty much looks like the knight, uh, the King of Wands. There might be cousins or brothers. Oh, that'd be interesting. Now, I, I, I'd watch a medieval series with these characters, definitely. I mean, to be fair, it would just be Game of Thrones slash Lord of the Rings. But still, it'd be worth watching. There's a niche market there. Okay, so... Now we're to the majors. So it's always quite it's quite rare to see the majors at the end, and especially with the Scarabino, because they do tend to put them ahead. They do tend to put them forward. Hmm. All right. So we start off with the fool, of whom I thought was the magician, but it's very rare to see the fool at the big front of the box. Depending on well, for most decks, it's quite rare to see that. So then we've got the magician, who. Looks very unassuming, actually. I, I quite like that. I wouldn't have assumed that would have been been him, but yeah, I like him. And then we've got the high priestess, um, who's making me think more of the empress than anyone else, to be honest. She does feel more like the empress, but um, yeah, once again on the stone chair with the all cool symbols, nice little flame, and round butterflies and fruit. So yeah, she does look more like the Empress, what with the kind of thought of harvest here and with wheat there, so. Okay, not quite what I expected. Um, I'm, <laughs> I, gu I guess I'm so used to the classic looks that when someone um, puts in something that's not traditional, it does kind of throw me off. And as I said, the High Priestess looked more how I would imagine the Priestess to look. So, um, but, um, she looks quite tired, actually. But, um, she does look quite jovial. She does look like she's, I'm assuming, she does look like she's dancing. And there's a nice red sky there. So, she does look like she's dancing. And she does kind of have that, um, um, 
feeling of like motherhood and fertility there. She's kind of got the grass in her hair there. And um, she does look very outdoorsy. So, um, yeah, just not quite the, just not quite the classical, um, the classic look. But at the same time, it's always good to kind of break up with the classics. But yeah, um, it's, a, it's a, I guess it's just more facial expression. It's kind of um, not unnerving, but just kind of kind of thrown me off a bit because she looks really drunk or really tired. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, outside of that, there's not a lot of classic look to her there. And same with the emperor, actually. Um, he doesn't look necessarily like a father or a leader. He looks like a bloke in his pyjamas, personally. But um, he does kind of look like a kind of a very undecisive leader there. So go to the love, um, to the or the hierophant there, and he looks like he's amongst children. So the hierophant is usually also considered a teacher outside of um, just like the religious leader so it makes sense that he'd be teaching the younger people um, so that's interesting so I was correct with this one the lovers there so um, looks like the, yeah so it looked like they're going through like a um, marriage ceremony or a union ceremony once again I don't quite know cut it all that much the chariot um, yeah go for it um, he looks like he's looks like he knows exactly what he wants to get done, what he wants to do, not necessarily how to do it, but looks like he's had results so far. He does look like a person who will just go uh, go into the direct he, when he's in the direction he knows where he's going. So then we've got uh, justice. Um, um, I mean, I like his bling. I guess. Hold on one second. I can't quite. Yeah. So he has like people he's putting judgment to on his tongue so I don't know maybe he doesn't necessarily speak um, he speak he lets other people speak and he decides rather than him judging on his own merit I guess that's kind of how that would be so you've got the hermit um, I guess that makes sense the um, iron monger there not the iron man villain but yeah that, that makes sense there so you've got the um, the wheel, so also known as the Wheel of Fortune, not the game show, obviously. And they kind of, once again, it doesn't have that kind of classic feel to it. Um, but I can understand the idea of someone being quite high up, and then the people lower down, and then the concept of you, can, you know you can move around, you can be high, you can be low, what have you. So you've got strength. Um, once again, it makes more sense it being a wild dog rather than it being a lion. I also like the fact it's a child as well, and she looks like she's got it covered. And she's kind of got the uh, blackbird above her, um, kind of cheering her on, I guess. Or being like a spiritual guide or overlook, or um, overwatcher. Not the video game. Um, the hanged man... So I'm guessing that's referring to the people, the person that's being held, rather than the person doing the holding. And that's kind of confusing. Um, once again, breaking off from tradition, which is fine. Um, but yeah, those look, those are quite interesting. So you've got the death card, everyone's favourite card. Um, they don't really seem to be. It, it seems to be more of death in defeat. So they are. So this person himself is death, not being affected by death. So, it's always also, it's also kind of interesting to always see the death card not being depicted by an actual uh, by a skeleton. So you've got temperance. Um, so one second, so I can have a good old look. Um, okay, so she looks like she's burying a loved one, probably her husband, and with all of his things. I can't quite see the temperance look there, but once again, we shall know. So you've got the devil, the great tempter, but this one's more about, hmm. So this would probably, so usually when I get cards, I don't tend to read through the books, 
you'd probably have to read through that. unless you're really good into Celtic folklore I'd probably recommend reading the book cover to cover well at least in the language at which you speak or read um, because I can't quite see it I see the horns but then that's especially with the green man anyway but yeah I I can't see it being like a tempter unless you count the women in the background but mm, I can't quite see that one uh, then you've got the tower <clears throat> that kind of makes a bit more sense now I know that's probably like a creature of myth I don't know which one because there are quite a lot but yeah I quite like the look of this one it does have the tower feel to it just kind of come I can imagine something like that being shocking if it just comes out of nowhere ah so we have the star so on the cover we have the star I guess that they admire the ring being the star that that kind of makes sense um, I believe like an expensive jewel is referred to the star of something so yeah their dream I guess their ambitions and wishes coming true in the fact that this has grown from a bowl rather than from the ground so that's quite an interesting one now we have the moon so I'll just take a look at the perspective here I can't tell if that person's the perspective on this is a bit strange I can't quite tell if that person's sitting on a wall or coming out from that archway I'm not quite sure where they are in relation to this door I'll, 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 I'll be losing sleep over this card but I like the you know you've got the moon in the background the wolf and the dog and the kind of the mysterious person here so I think that one's quite nice in the regard of uh, them cut, it's, it's the fact that someone's kind of sneaking out and the, the stuff is being hidden covered and stuff so that's pretty cool so then we've got the sun um, which um, I'd look at this and probably think there is a positive to there's going to be a positive at the end of the negative you're currently in that's all I can really see to that because that person is not having a good time or maybe it might indicate that your joy might be bringing someone else misery or you're profiting off someone else's misery so we've got judgment and that looks like a good afterlife everyone seems to be quite happy there so that's kind of where I go with that and then we have the world that I like that I like it's not glamorized it's just an old man with a map he's looked at his life categorized it all this is where he is with blackbird on his shoulder broken spear is part of an experience I like that one this one's really nice I well done guys I'd clap my hands but I'm holding the card but seriously I do like that as an end and it's like uh, beard being all in knots and stuff that just looks really cool okay uh, sorry it took so long but uh, that's my um, unboxing of the Celtic Tarot um, once again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You can follow me on the social medias. And I'll see you again soon. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe. And hit that bell notification. Uh, the intro and outro music was Tetris Linear Groove, available on Overclocked Remix. Give that website a look, great stuff on there. And if you also like some of my other bits, you can check out my videos. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Tumblr, Blue6Tarot. I'll see you again soon. Thanks again for watching.